Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Koch, and I am the National Sales Manager for Manure Manager Magazine. I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar where we are talking about overcoming solids buildup issues in pits and lagoon systems with award-winning additive Manure Magic. Before we start, I'd like to do some housekeeping. Please type your questions in the box in the bottom right corner. This webinar will be uploaded to manuremanager.com for viewing at a later time. The recording will be emailed 24 hours after the event. I am very pleased to welcome Scott Conley, Chief Delivery Officer from Drylet, to share with us how to prevent manure solids in your lagoon systems. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Sharon, for the introduction and to everyone for joining the webinar today. I am Scott Conley, and I'm the Chief Delivery Officer at Drylet. I've been with the company for over seven years. I am a chemical engineer by education from Georgia Tech and have an MBA from Rice University. I'm focused on delivering high performance outcomes and benefits to customers that use Manure Magic. Today, we will discuss in detail the benefits you can achieve using Manure Magic. Manure Magic is powered by Drylet's technology. I'm going to focus on the ways you can utilize this technology for improving your manure storage and handling process. So let's begin. As you can see in this video, the manure accumulated in this pull plug shallow pit has been broken down by Manure Magic into a homogeneous slurry. Their operators are emptying the pit by removing the plug and the result speaks for themselves. This particular manure pit is located at a farm owned and operated by a major European swine integrator. This is a facility where they rotate the flush or washouts about every three weeks. Manure magic is added after each flush out to prevent and keep the solids from crusting and slowing down the flushing process. As you may have seen or experienced yourself, for those of you with deep pits, manure crusting can lead to lengthy pump outs. Crusting also creates challenges related to nutrient consistency from top to bottom, which manure magic will alleviate. Our customers that use Manure Magic for their flush system can significantly reduce the need for excessive jetting to clean up the manure pits and lines. This, in a nutshell, is the kind of impact you can expect to see from using Manure Magic in your pits and or lagoons. In fact, you will be able to see some striking images in a little bit when one of our partners shares a couple of case studies. I want to emphasize that Manure Magic will work in any setting to solve manure handling problems or improve the process. This covers your deep pits, your pull plug flush systems, and your lagoons. So what are, what are we talking about? We're talking about fighting the manure challenges that you see in swine, dairy, beef, pits, and lagoons of any size. We consistently hear from customers that the product does exactly what we say it does. It is a cost-effective tool available on the market to break down solids. It takes a very few applications and a relatively small quantity of product compared to other additives to achieve great results. Across all systems, Manure Magic is remarkably easy to apply. It also requires very few applications, and you typically only have to apply the product once per year to achieve the benefits you need. One other benefit across all systems is odor reduction, and this is not just us talking, but backed up by a study done by Purdue University that showed a 43% reduction in hydrogen sulfide gas and a 50% reduction in odor. So let's take a moment now to hear a testimonial about that very thing. We had a lot of odor. Every time it was a hot day, a southwest wind, it was in our house. A northwest wind or northeast wind, and the neighbors could smell it quite badly. Um, it's been a problem, and it's made it hard to, to just live your life. I met the people from Manure Magic. I believed what they said, but I was still very leery because I've tried several products, and they just have not performed. We are eight weeks from when we put it in. I would say our odor's been killed by 90%. By the 4th of July, my daughter had a party here. We had a southwest wind. There were a lot of college kids. I was concerned that it would smell. They didn't even know we had an earthen basin over there or pigs on the farm. So for today's discussion, we're going to describe what manure magic is, how it works, and the best way to use and apply it for your given situation. We're also very happy to have joining us today three of our customers who will describe their experiences and challenges and how they use Manure Magic to solve them. First, we have Ana Sudo e Silva with More Pig from Portugal. 
followed by Samantha DeWitt and Seth Winger with, with AgVice, and finally Chris Bonnenkamp with RCB Honey Haulers. We're gonna keep plenty of time to answer your questions, so please remember to write in your questions and submit them uh, along the presentation. Apart from the nutrient value contained in manure along with the regulatory mandates, none of us wants to deal with the nasty truth about manure management. It remains an unavoidable reality of the livestock industry, and we've got to continue to look at ways to find and strive to solve this uh, manure problem and improve the ways to handle this waste. One of the main factors and challenges that involve the manure is understanding the microorganisms and how they can benefit breaking down the solids. And this is where manure magic comes to play. It provides a delivery mechanism of beneficial microbes that will fight against the bad actors that cause foaming, crust formation, and or nuisance odors and toxic gases. Manure Magic is a dry to the touch product formulated from precipitated silica and beneficial microbes. It is very easy to handle, it's applied across the slats and watered into the pit or added directly into your lagoon. We use food grade silica and non-GMO class one microbes. What this means is it's very safe to handle and not detrimental to your livestock. Manure Magic is a biocatalyst. It enhances the bioremediation. And you can see in the central image on the slide, it shows the interior of a silica particle with bacteria attached to the silica. This is where manure magic is very different from other microbiological pit additives. The beneficial microbes are loaded on and throughout the particle. It acts as a shield. This protective armor provides a barrier preventing other microorganisms and other bacterial phages or viruses attacking the beneficial microbes. So it allows them to work. Another advantage is that silica particles loaded with the microbes sink into the sludge. In other words, they deliver the microbes deep into the manure sludge, regardless of the system, whether it's a deep pit, a shallow pit, or a lagoon. So now let's take talk about how to best apply manure magic to your situation. For deep pit barns with animals already inside, you can add the product along the slats near the alleyways and wash the product in. Once you're on a set schedule, you should add the product after your seasonal pump out, typically once per year. The number of times you might add the product will depend on your initial manure pit conditions and how you plan your rotation. Typically, uh, we get the feedback from customers that just one or two times per year is needed to achieve the desired results. Remember that the time to apply the product is at least 48 hours after disinfecting the barn. 25 pounds are a minimal re recommended dose for pits and up to 50 pounds per million gallon capacity is a standard rate. For lagoons, typically connected to barns with flush systems that have shallow pits, the lagoons act as a waste storage and provide some treatment given their size. We recommend dosing the lagoon and pits at the same time. If you use lagoon effluent recirculation, you can benefit from maintaining a few inches of the wash in the pit after the washout. This acts as new bacterial seed from the lagoon if you use non-partable water for your wash, then we recommend leaving some of the manure after washout in the pit and apply the product after you completed the washout. I mentioned previously, a typical dose rate is a range of 25 to 50 pounds per million gallons of capacity. The product can be applied from the shore of a lagoon and remain effective. However, the best method is shown in the photo here where you apply the product across most of the surface area of the lagoon. If you have any questions about it, applying manure magic, I will be happy to go into more detail during the Q&A session after the presentation concludes. For now, I'm delighted that we have three customers joining us today, as I previously mentioned. So without further ado, I will turn over the discussion to Anna. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this invitation. It's a, it's a great pleasure for me to share what happened in Portugal. Um, for a long time now, a lot of products have been tried and people are not believing anymore in anything work, good working. So um, I'll present the case of a farm that has uh, 500 sow. They do the old cycle and they have a uh, four uh, lagoon system. For these last 10 years, they uh, pretty much were careless about the stage of the lagoons. And last year they got so much um, solids build up that they could not use the legumes um, anymore. So instead of dredging, which they tried before on lagoon number three and caused a lot of damage to the banks, they uh, decided to only drain the liquids and used whatever they could um, of the volume left. 
So they decided to try Jalet, and um, but they jumped to Lagoon number two, which had uh, a little more capacity. And what they did is they drained away all the liquid they could, um, and but still there was a lot, a lot of solids. And um, we decided to use um, the recommended dose of uh, one kilogram per 80 cubic meters. I'm sorry, I'm used to meters. And we, what we did, we used a water pump and went all around the lagoon bank. Uh, it was easy um, to, to put the, 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 the product, uh, Manure Magic, under the foam. All we cared was that um, the, um, the tip of the hose was under the foam. And it was unbelievable. Uh, one week after, you could see the foam disappearing. And when I went back four weeks after, these are the pictures and the movie of what we had. It was totally, totally different. This was summertime in Portugal. So you would have between, it was really warm, um, it was the end of July, so it was never less than 12 uh, Celsius degree. And sometimes it could go above uh, 39 degrees. So it was really warm. And uh, so the difference, the temperature was so warm that the bacteria really run very fast. Um, happen, uh, the, the, doing this good, they decided to treat lagoon number one which had uh, more, even more solids. Again, they drained, they could not dredge anymore. They drained the liquid. And again, we repeated the volume of one kilogram per 80 cubic meters. It was autumn by then. So the temperature were a bit uh, colder, still never less than eight, six minimum, up to 23, 25. And I'm really sorry, I have no footage from the first week, but it was unbelievable. On the first week, all the foam, all the solids were gone. And then uh, by week number three, we started to see um, more um, foam and solids, and we realized they were coming from the bottom. So like um, pieces of the solids that were under the liquid phase came loose, and uh, started to d dissolve. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, for the first time in Portugal, there's a, they, they realized a product that, that works. And uh, it was on only one treatment. So lagoon number two is uh, treated for up to almost eight months now. And it's still very liquid. It has a very shallow foam, but it, it's really liquid and lagoon number one still looks like um, the first two months after so it's really impacting the results and um, from then uh, a lot of people are uh, trying and these lagoons will be kept alive as i say by um, pouring on the product in the pits um, on, at the barns and um, the effluents are feeding the lagoons now. So that's what we did. Awesome, thank you, Anna. It's truly incredible to see those before and after uh, pictures and videos. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, next, we have Samantha DeWitt and Seth Wingert, uh, co-owners of Agvice. I'll turn it over to you guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Samantha DeWitt. Like Justin said, um, we call in a company called AgVice. We're located in Iowa, and we work um, primarily with finishing, swine finishing facilities in the state of Iowa. Uh, we do work with some sow farms, some cattle facilities as well. Um, but we, I mean, to give a little background on us, um, we work with multiple integrators um, across what we offer our services. Um, we write manure management plans for our farmers and keep them in compliance, uh, regulatory compliance. So we work with a, a variety of growers and farmers across the state um, and have, have really had great success with Manure Magic um, at those farms and encourage our farmers to give it a try. And, and like we said a little earlier, it's you know the ease of use and the price point um, that a lot of guys appreciate and, and obviously the dramatic results that they receive from it when it comes to solids buildup and having a homogenous solution and ease of pumpability, um, that sort of thing. So Seth, if you want to add to that. Yeah, um, 
our, our growers like the product. We can add it in the fall um, after pumping, uh, which is also when, because most of our customers and our swine growers also have row crop farms. So they don't have a lot of time. Um, this is a good time of year to add it. They have time. They remember to do it after manure pumping. Um, one thing in our use that may be a little different than what others use it in say sow farms is that we're working with a lot of wean to finish barns that only turn uh, approximately every six months to get washed. Um, so oftentimes our customers have to uh, put it down the center walkways of barns and wash it in from there. Uh, the product seems to move very well. It may not be the perfect scenario for adding it, uh, but it, it does work um, given how these barns are operated. Um, uh, being in the Midwest uh, of the U.S., we have a, a lot of hog barns and there's a lot of competing products out there. Uh, Manure Magic really stands out for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that it's a dry concentrated form. Uh, most products are liquid. Um, you know, on, on these finisher barns, we can add uh, between 12 and 25 pounds, depending upon the size of the site. Uh, you might need 10 to 20 gallons of a liquid product. Um, and that makes it a lot easier to handle if, if it saves a lot of labor. Um, there again, as I kind of mentioned before, we only typically treat the barn once a year. Uh, sometimes we we'll reevaluate uh, in springtime if they do need a follow up dosage. Um, we usually start them on the on the lower end of the dosage. Um, and one thing with only dosing uh, once or maybe twice a year is that this, this product is quite a bit more cost effective than the competitors that we run into. Uh, by and large, it, it's going to be around half of what a lot of the competitors cost. Uh, much with results that you can see. Um, and that's the big reason we sell it is we've seen the results. Um, the last point I had to touch on here is that it doesn't cost foam. Uh, we have firsthand experience with products that will get rid of your solids, but they may cause foam. Uh, the diets of the pigs in the Midwest have a tendency to cause manure foam. Uh, and if you've not seen that firsthand, it can be 12, 24 inches of foam. It can come up with flat. Um, so, and on its own. So, normal practice is to add uh, minosin uh, to the pit. That makes the pit go stagnant. It, it basically stops the bacteria, the, the rogue bacteria in the pit, and the foam will go away. The problem is your pit is now stagnant, and you will see excess solids build up and maybe an increase in odor sometimes. That's why we always tell our customers to apply their magic at some point after after the foam has went away and the minosin has done its work. Um, and that can get restarted and gets it back to the condition it should be in. Thanks, Seth and Samantha, for, for sharing that with us. Uh, next, we'll have Chris Bonenkamp uh, to share his experience with the product. Uh, he is a bumper located in Northwest Iowa. So the main reason that we started using the product was uh, we were having a lot of problems with the barns. We were pumping, leaving two to three feet in every barn that just turns to straight solids. So I started using the product Waste Away, which we had decent results with. Um, the biggest problem we were having with that is you have to put it in once a month. And yeah, it costs more money and you have to store it and it cannot be outside because it cannot get cold. So it was a big problem with all these people take care of barns. They were not applying it once a month. And then I came across this product that I knew was once a year. And that is the biggest selling point for all of my customers. Once a year is a huge deal. Um, we are also, I tried it on three or four barns this past fall, uh, stirring it in with a pump. So I will have some results on that this coming fall, but I think that's going to be a very good way to apply the product. Um, we've had very, very good luck. I have a lagoon right by my house that we leave about a foot to a foot and a half of solids on the bottom. And last year was my first year using Renner Magic on it. And you could see the floor of the lagoon when we were done. And it's a concrete lagoon. So it's been 
a phenomenal product. Um, the big integrators love it. Like I said, once a once a year apply rate and I guess that's all I really have to say today, but we've had fantastic luck with it. Chris, what is the, uh, you know, I think the, the main benefit to you is as the pumper is that it, it makes your life easier, right? But, but do you get other uh, good feedback from the, from the people that are in the barns um, on, on any other positive impacts that they see? Yeah, they're really happy with the non-crusting and like the other guy said, um, very good with the, uh, um, with the smell of the barns you can you can tell every barn that has manure magic in it just by driving by you can drive by 60 mile an hour and you can tell if the barn has manure magic in it by the smell of it my wife comments on every barn we drive by whether it has it in or not which that's a very that's a very big deal which is partially because it's keeping the nitrogen in which is good for the farmer as well because keeping the nitrogen level higher certainly certainly and, and i think as an industry we have to be cognizant of of odor, uh, especially considering uh, nuisance lawsuits and things that have gone on in the southeast, uh, we certainly want to do everything we can to, to be good stewards and, and make sure that we don't have those issues. So, um, with that, I will thank all of our panelists um, and certainly thank all of our attendees. I know we have people from across the country as as far as Russia on here today, so we certainly thank everybody for for participating. Um, I guess we didn't get a didn't get a chance to introduce myself, uh, Justin Whitley. I'm a livestock accounts manager. Um, joined Drylit uh, just a couple months ago here, so solely focused on the livestock business um, and here to service and support and, and answer any questions to that end. Um, I am a, a barn owner myself. Uh, my wife and I we live in Minnesota, but we own a farm in, in North Carolina. So, so I understand the pains and uh, all the things that that you guys have to go through in dealing with manure. Um, and so we're here to uh, to work with nature and, and try to provide those microbes to to help make your life a, a little bit easier. So uh, also we have uh, Malcolm Baby on here today, uh, Chief Operations Officer with uh, Drylit. So thank you, Malcolm, for being on here. Uh, him and Scott should also be available to uh, to field any questions that you guys may have. So. Uh, thanks to uh, Anna and Chris and uh, Seth and Samantha for being on here with us. And at this time, uh, I'll turn it back over to Sharon to uh, to start uh, going through a question and answer session. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Justin. I appreciate it. Um, first question, does the old saying ring true? If, um, if some works, more is better? Or is there a a detrimental effect with too much product. You mentioned starting on a lower end of the suggested product, but the cost is less. Uh, let me answer that. So, so yes, you know, putting more product in, but what what we think is uh, what we've discovered is uh, we want to work with uh, each individual based on their system. But we've seen, uh, as you've heard from our panelists today, customers that uh, depending if it's a deep pit, about 25 pounds per year. If you've already got some problems, we're, we're probably gonna recommend a little bit more to get that first year under control and get your cut capacity back. So that come the next cycle, that you're ready to go and use a maintenance dose. Uh, flush systems, we're just gonna triage the, the, the situation and make sure you get the right amount to solve your problem and then get you on a maintenance dose. Okay. Uh, Next question. Uh, it, the question is about the Portugal case. Did you notice any odor reducing while using manure magic in lagoons? Anna? Yeah, uh, yes, we did. Although odor was not an issue, this is a barn by the literal the coast of Portugal, so it's quite windy and, uh, and uh, there's not mu much uh, people living nearby, but the People working at the farm, they notice that. And now that they're using it in the barns, they also can tell the odor is different and you feel it different in the barns. Nice. Next question. Any feedback from dairy? Notably, ability to suspend heavier solids with fiber and sand or just sand? So if I, if I understood the question, we're, we're talking about uh, lifting lifting the solids that are at the bottom of the of the lagoon. 
or maybe the manure pit. So, so depending on you're breaking down the solids, that means gas is going to be released. You're going to get you're going to get lifting of solids. Uh, I, I think the sand probably not so much. Certainly the fiber, the fibrous material, any pro undigested proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, those will probably lift if they're uh, in the solid state. Certainly in the aqueous phase, but but the the, the sand itself uh, is uh, probably going to be too dense uh, to be lifted by the gas. And and I would add there, just from a dosing standpoint, uh, we would recommend a higher rate. Um, obviously, there's there's higher fiber content in in ruminant diets and and in ruminant manure than there is in swine. So uh, we would probably be closer to that 50 pounds uh, as a maintenance rather than a triage. Um, and if you had a, a bigger issue, we'd probably be closer to 75 to 100 pounds at least initially um, to to get those solids cleared up. But certainly we have we do have customers that have used it in in dairy lagoons um, with positive feedback for sure. Next question: With the Purdue study on H2S, how did the measure the how did they measure the odors? Um, auto the, the, the odors sorry. were through. Go ahead. Um, did the measure? Uh, any liquid sulfide levels, total dissolved, or like H2S in solution? So, so in the first part, if I if I got it right, the the question was about the odor measurement, and so that was through human panel. So they actually they took samples and then would dilute the gas down and have people smell until they couldn't smell any odor. And then, as far as the uh, the dissolved gases and the constituents in the aqueous phase, uh, they did not measure that. They measured only the uh, the actual gas in headspace. And this was this this uh, this this report is actually available, and we're happy to send it to anyone that wants to reach out to us. Um, and so it was a uh, a reactor system specifically designed for gas measurements at the Purdue University, headed by Dr. Huber. Has, yeah, we can. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sharon. I was just going to note that uh, we can send that, or it is also available on our website. Uh, if you go to drylit.com and then click on products and manure man or manure magic, uh, and scroll down to the bottom, there's a listing of uh, some some previously published papers. Has the product ever been used in a closed system? One that is covered, which produces methane for, the, for generation, and do you have such results? Uh, this is Malcolm, and I'll be happy to answer that. So the answer to that question is yes. It's been used for covered lagoons, both in swine as well as in dairy and cattle applications uh, and the results have essentially been the same uh, extremely similar levels of uh, significant solids reduction and uh, as much as 30 percent increase in gas generation uh, we also have published case studies on those and you would also be able to find them on our website okay excellent um, how much manure magic do I need to add to my lagoon? I'd say the range is, uh, depending on the severity, it could be as high as 50 pounds of manure magic per million gallons, uh, or as low as 25. How and, many pounds? Oh, sorry. And the, the only other thing I would just add to that, Sharon, is it depends on the outcomes you want. And and so that's you know we would like to have that discussion and, and determine what the you know what are the benefits that the uh, the farm operations is looking to get. Yeah, Chris, you unmuted there. Did you have something to add? Oh, I did not try to do that. Yeah. All right, just making sure. It says I'm still muted. What is the cost of manure magic? The cost is seven hundred and seventy five dollars per twenty five pounds. We ship that in five gallon pails or in twenty five pound waterproof bags. 
Has Drylet ever considered u- use, utilizing the product in aquacu- aquaculture ponds? Uh, we have. Uh, there, we've we've had some success in that area, but it's not it's not a uh, main focus uh, for the company. You know, our technology, the drylet technology, is is has a broad application across many many markets. But we have uh, we've we've really focused on livestock and uh, renewable natural gas and industrial solids that typically are you know where they you find uh, pulp and paper or heavy heavy solids in lagoon systems, whether they're facultative uncovered lagoons or covered lagoons where they're trying to capture the the biomethane. With the rations between different from Anna's situation to Chris's situation, what component of rations are the indicators of changing a recipe of manure magic? You know, we've been at this for seven years. We've we've got a flagship product that we think uh, covers a lot of different situations, uh, whether it's the systems themselves, the deep pits, flush systems, lagoons, the amount of solids in the lagoon. The the, the you know we we go in, we can test. If that's something you're interested in pursuing. We can look at the volatile solids concentration. We can look at that fraction to the TS. We can look at the the uh, the whole chemistry and, and come up with a, a program. Uh, but the product itself is well suited for a lot of different diverse uh, and you know different situations. And I don't know if that question was maybe about about differences in feed rations, um, but we've we've used the product across uh, several different systems uh, that obviously feed feed different uh, ingredients and different rations, um, and the results are all the same. You know, no matter the uh, the the different ratios of carbohydrates and fats um, and proteins um, they're all all of the the bacteria that are included in this product will break those down um, so there shouldn't be any issue there just in case that was the the question how does manure magic affect the nitrogen and phosphorus levels in manure <laughs> i can i can take this one scott um, so we don't have we don't have a, a definitive answer, but but I do have some anecdotal evidence uh, that I can share with you. We do have one customer who took samples um, at each foot as they were pumping out, um, and not only was the manure mat, the manure product coming out uh, more homogeneous, so um, it was it was a better mixture, less agitation time uh, from top to bottom, but also they did notice an increase uh, when they did their test. Of higher NP and K. Now, it's not that adding this product creates NP and K. Um, if anything, we're doing a better job of breaking those solids down and and making those nutrients more available. Um, I don't think we'll ever make a claim that that we're going to increase your crop yield. Uh, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I, I think that's there are way too many variables in that um, to to make that claim publicly. Um, but yes, there there is a potential to, by breaking down those solids, increase your available MP and K. Um, and I'll be happy to add, add to that. Um, so typically, when you look at the solids in, in manure, um, roughly 10% of those solids is nitrogen, and another 1% to 2% is phosphorus. But the nitrogen and the phosphorus is bound with the solids. What the manure magic product, product does is it breaks down the solids and basically turns it into a gas. If you had a covered lagoon, you would actually see that as an increase in gas generation. And what basically happens is as we break down those solids and release the carbon portion of it, uh, then the solids essentially go into the liquid phase. So what Justin was describing as higher levels of nitrogen and and, and phosphorus being observed in the liquid phase is actually uh, an end product of the capacity of uh, the microbes within the manure magic system to break down those solids and release the nitrogen and phosphorus component of the solids themselves. So our expectation would be that in any system that we apply manure magic, uh, once we get an effective breakdown of solids, then um, what you would expect potentially to be able to see is that the 
on the liquid side, in the liquid manure stream that you're uh, you're putting out, there will be more readily available nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, I've got a comment here from Doug Grieving uh, regarding the rations question. He says mostly regarding DDGs. Hope that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And, and again, a similar answer. Um, and you know, d higher levels of DDGs is where we sometimes will will see those foaming issues. Uh, Iowa State has done some studies um, to suggest that higher levels of DDGs will will cause foaming issues. Um, you know, but still, in the same system, and you know, one barn down the road may have foaming, and, and the one next to it, a mile down the road, does not. Um, and the study that we've done with Iowa State suggested that there, um, and Scott can probably do a better job explaining this than I can, but um, the different levels of uh, certain microbes that are causing that foam start to take over and cause that foam, and, th and that tends to happen in higher DDG level diets, um, where we are able to, through our bacteria proliferation, able to overcome and outcompete uh, the negative microbes that are causing that foam. Yeah, I would just add to that, uh, Justin, for anyone that's interested, uh, Dr. Dan Anderson out of Iowa State University did a study on the speciation. He looked at a detailed understanding of the, the microbiome in a pit where the foam was forming uh, versus the non-foaming. And uh, so he, he, that, he presented those findings in a 2016, I think it was 2016 World Pork Expo. And then he also spent some time describing the, the way the foam is formed and how it the, the me mechanism by which it uh, stays uh, stable. So I, I would encourage you to read that. Um, and the big takeaway for us here at Drylet and Manure Magic is uh, there's got to be an emphasis on the microbiology, and that's that's what we do. We we focus on the microbiology, and we have a tool that can alter that alter that community in a way that's beneficial to you and to abate and prevent foam. Uh, we're not going to claim we can get rid of foam if it starts forming. Uh, but we but we have shown, and certainly Dan Anderson did a study again with our product, showing that we can suppress it and keep it from forming. Next question: Does temperature matter? Absolutely, temperature matters. Uh, we 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 would ask you not to store this out uh, below freezing. Um, you know, we we want to send you the product. Uh, so yeah, temperature is applied to two things: the product itself. Um, you know, once we'll send you what you need and you should use it as soon as you get it. And then the second thing is uh, temperature can play a role in what's going on in a pit. So, uh, but we do see benefits um, from fall through winter. And then we obviously see improved performance as spring, the spring fall comes in and into the summer months. Next question that, is, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Sharon. Um, is it safe if the animals accidentally consume some manure magic off the slats? Uh, we, we have heard of uh, that happening. Uh, we've, there's no indication that it uh, is harmful to the animals. Again, uh, I don't know if you captured it. It was captured in our discussion and sorry for those technical difficulties, but we use a food grade silica. Uh, this is commonly found in food products. And then the, the microbes that we, we use in our consortia and added to the precipitated silica, they're biosafety level one. So these are non-GMO, meaning they're not genetically modified and they're, they've been found to not be harmful to humans and animals. Can I apply manure magic before washing the barn? Uh, no, our recommendation is uh, in the in the washing stage, uh, right about 48 hours after disinfecting, it would be the ideal time to put the product in. Next question: What's the protocol of applying manure magic in relationship to disinfectant use in the barn? Yeah, we just want to avoid. Uh, avoid that disinfectant right because the, the disinfectant is there to to kill bacteria um, and we're adding bacteria uh, so we don't want those two to meet so we want to be at least 48 hours uh, post disinfection uh, before we add manure magic 
And that is it for the questions. Um, so I will close out. Um, thank you everyone for your time today. We, we appreciate you joining us to learn about manure magic and how it can benefit your livestock operation. Obviously, please feel free to reach out to the Drylit team and their partners if you would like to discuss specific situations in detail. Their contact information is available on screen. With that, I thank you and I wish you a great rest of your day.